All right, so recently Jay Moore was on Tiger Belly, and he started roasting Joe Rogan's comedy career, which was hilarious because you don't see it very often, other comedians making fun of Rogan's comedy. So when it happens, it's always pretty funny. And the fans seem to think so too. Like the top comments are talking about this. Somebody said, the fact he called out Rogan is amazing. The rest of the podcast comedy world knows he's not funny, but when dare to speak ill of him, everyone cowers to him. Good for this dude. But the reason Jay is calling out Joe is because Joe played a part in his falling out with Burt Kreischer, who used to open for him, which led to Jay's comedy career kind of falling apart because he was labeled a joke thief, which I'll get more into. But during this episode of Tiger Belly, Jay brings up this clip from Tiger Belly from around five years ago when Burt Kreischer is on there and he's talking about working for Jay and Bobby is talking about working for Carlos Mencia because they're both in similar situations where Carlos and Jay were accused of stealing jokes and then they were expected to defend them since they're working for him and opening for him. And then also Jay and Carlos both just don't have the best reputation. You know, it sounds like it kind of sucked opening for them. Like, Bird claims one time Jay slapped him in front of a bunch of people, which Jay brings up here and denies. And I think he just randomly brings it up. So you can tell he's still definitely not over all the Joe and Bird stuff that went down, which is understandable. But it's just funny because he acted like this just happened. He's like, whenever I'm listening to your podcast, you're talking shit about me. But that clip is from over five years ago. And this whole situation happened over 10 years ago at this point. But I guess now he's finally ready for some vengeance. So we'll see how this goes. When I watched this podcast, you guys were talking about how I was abusive. When? You and some, you and Bert were talking about how. Oh, this was like a, I do remember. Like this. apparently, I, like, I slapped Bert around and abused him. He did like, that. I didn't do it. No, it, it was the whole conversation was about. <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, this was about the, yeah, this what did was I say? What did I say? What did I say? Old I remember house. old studio. Yeah, yeah. The first time we had Bert on, yeah. I remember there was a whole thing like, about Jesus. that. Yeah. Sorry for trying to help my friends. Three point eight million views. Yeah, it's affected my uh, career actually. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys and Joe Rogan have affected me negatively in the following way. <laughs> the comedy, but but, but but what I want to say though is, um, so what is the truth behind that? I want you like, I mean, to this day, not this has nothing to do with you. Okay. But going back, like, I can't post a picture of my dogs without somebody saying, "Did you steal them from Bert too?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And there's more to this I'm going to play, but Jay doesn't really explain the whole situation, so I'm going to try my best to. I'm not going to get everything because there was a lot going on, and I already made a whole video about this. But basically, Bert used to open for him, and Bert has this crazy Tracy Morgan story, which who knows if it's even true. But he told it, and Jay, he does a good Tracy Morgan impression, so they decided he should start doing it in his act, and Bert allowed him to. He said it was a good idea, and he wanted to see him do it because he felt like he was part of it or something. Because also whenever Jay would tell it, he would say it happened to his friend and not himself. But then over time, he started telling it in first person. And Bert heard him tell it on Opie and Anthony one day, and he's kind of upset about it. And then when Bert went on Rogan's podcast for the first time, he told the story. And he prefaced it by saying it's his friends, like he agreed he could do it in his act. But there are already rumors of Jay stealing jokes. So when Bert told the story for the first time, everybody's like, oh, see, he does steal jokes. And Jay got a ton of backlash for it. And he wanted Bert to defend him. And Bert claims they both agreed that Jay would stop using it. But then he heard Jay was using it in his special. So he went back on Rogan's podcast and Rogan got him to talk about it. And Rogan defended Bert a lot and he kept like pressuring him to stick up for himself and everything. So that influenced Bert a lot. Because if it weren't for Rogan, Bert probably would have just caved and let Jay continue using it or defended him. Because Bert was like, you know, it's complicated. Like I got to take half the blame for it. But Red Band and Rogan just kept telling him, like, no, dude, he's still your story. It's obvious, and you got to stick up for yourself. Great time it's today. It's important, man. It's it important is, for it him is. as much as it's important for you to not let people step on you, for him to not step on people, you know? He, he knows. I think he knows everything that he did wrong in that trans, transgression. And you know that you were a little bit weak. And I was weak. And, and so, so if anyone... Is the fault? I'm as much as fault. No, I mean, yep. as, a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. let him step on you. Yeah. So, you let him so it's, you. it's completely, it is something that if I want to have a productive life as a comic. I think that's going to do more damage to him than it's going to benefit him. He's a great storyteller. He's a funny guy. He's a really and, funny and, and he's a great storyteller. And telling your story like that, it makes him seem illegitimate. It I really, just, I mean, he's, he's got, he's better than that. He doesn't need to do that. He's, he, he's, he does his not. Whole, his whole act is good. It's, yeah. you know, he's, he's a solid comic. He's a very funny guy. And I, he doesn't yeah. need to do that one bit. That one bit discredits him in a way that's unfortunate and unnecessary. And uh, unfortunately, really, truly, it's going to define him. 
Yeah, and Joe is definitely right there. I mean, as we see on this Tiger Belly podcast, he's talking about how he still gets comments about it. So this was really similar to the Carlos Mencia incident. And that's why Bobby and Bert were talking about it during that podcast that Jay mentioned. Because Bert can relate to Bobby a lot. Like he's talking about the video that Bobby made to defend Carlos. And he's like, man, I was in that same exact position. But Bert chose not to really defend Jay. I mean, he's trying to be respectful towards him during the Rogan podcast. Like you tell he wasn't trying to throw him under the bus. But I think he realized he didn't need Jay anymore since he's friends with Rogan. He's doing his podcast and work with him. That is much easier and better for his career. Like working for somebody when you're their employee, and that's is very clear what that is. Yeah. There's no like for all you that don't understand, like there are guys like like and I'll say Joe is like Ari was always his friend and, and worked with him. Tom was his friend and worked with him. Joey was his friend and worked with him. If you work with Joe Tony, if you work with Joe, you work with Joe. Yeah. You go out to eat. Like, I, I will say this I, I very candidly. Jay made it very clear to me one time that I worked for him, that I was his employee. Mm -hmm. And then, then there becomes this, like, weird fucking loyalty where you're like, I don't want to fuck up the boss's job because that's my job. Like, it's not like it's we're weird. buddies watching you visibly shake with a cigarette and going like, he doesn't mean this. He, he's this is this is that Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a, a hostage saying they're oh, treating yeah. me good, mom. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah that's I, I remember that so vividly. Yeah, and I was I was I'll just say in a in a in a form of representation, I was asked to do what you did. Yeah, and I chose against it because of your video. Yeah, so Bert could be exaggerating. Obviously, he's known to do that, but it just sounds like opening for Jay wasn't the best time. And same thing with Carlos Mencia. You know, it seemed like some of the comedians back in the day had the mentality that they're above their openers. And if you want to make it in comedy, you got to go through this process and pay your dues or work your way up the ranks. You know, and part of that is just putting up with their bullshit. So I'd say when it comes to that kind of thing, Rogan, that's a big positive influence he's had on comedy because now I don't think that really exists as much. And, you know, the stories about him, like he's always treated his openers really well. Like Ari Shafir was just talking about it on Tucker Carlson, how Rogan used to just always hand out money to everybody. And when he had gone on the road with him, Rogan would pay for all the dinner and the hotels and everything and paid him more than everybody else was. So Rogan's always been really generous and, you know, he wants to see his openers and his friends succeed. Like he's not trying to keep them down at all. So when Bert became friends with him and started doing his podcast, it's like he was finally free. But it's just unfortunate. He kind of destroyed Jay Moore's career in the process. Like literally that's that has affected my career to the tune of millions of dollars when Rogan and Bert had that thing on Rogan. And Rogan being the comedy end all be all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Which is interesting. Yeah. That he's the arbiter of funny. But can I just... <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Considering I, all I, the I, times I, Joe Rogan has made us all laugh. I, I understand. I understand. It's so funny that you say that because it's like now, like, you know, I have a sense of like, you know, you, 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 I mean... I'm, I'm trying to sell out bars in Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And other guys are doing like arenas. Um, and I, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've never, so, sometimes you'll see, you, I, I have seen it, but I've seen the trans, your transformation, right, has been just so obvious to me and it is so clear that I'm like, oh, this guy, you, you're, you, the path that you're about to lead now is going to be fucking incredible. Fuck yeah. I really believe that. Right on. Yeah, yeah. You've changed so much. You're so fucking talented. Yeah, so you can tell it's tough for him to see Burt Kreischer selling out arenas while he can barely even sell out a small comedy club. You know, it's got to be tough to handle. Like, also during the podcast, at one point, Bobby was talking about how he was on tour with Burt, and, you know, he fell and split his lip open. And he said David Tell was the only person to reach out to him after that and see how he's doing. And Jay's like, who else was on that tour? And Bobby starts listing everybody, and Jay's like, what do they all have in common? You know, they're all Rogan comedians. And Bobby's like, oh, I get it. And then Jay starts complaining about how he can't sell any tickets. Out of all the comics, you know what I mean, that was on that tour, he was the only one to, to call Dave Attell and go, how are you? Yeah. Yeah, he is a good dude. And I forever, you know what I mean, will, so I'll, would, I'll, I'll, I would die for that guy. I would who die else for was on that tour? <laughs> Sam Morrill. Love him. Um, uh, Dan Soder. No? Yeah, Nothing? No. Yeah, Burt Kreischer. Um, what do all those guys have in common? 
Where do they come from? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, oh, no, this is fun. <laughs> this is great. I love this game. <laughs> they come from America. The guy that the guy <laughs> not in that crew, yeah, yeah, is the guy to reach out and actually ask how you're doing. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, you're blowing my mind. Now. I've had nothing but time to think about <laughs> all <of> this <laughs> as I sit around wondering why my late show and first show have been combined and it's still not sold out. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. One day yeah, yeah. I'll get on a mic and no. vengeance will be no, no. And then also at the end of the podcast, he's supposed to be plugging his comedy dates. And he's basically like, oh, we don't need to do that. I didn't sell enough tickets. I told him to cancel it. So now I'm off the whole summer. See, No, no, no. I, I got a call from Springfield. They said, hey, uh, they only got 40 tickets sold the whole weekend. Would you mind canceling? I said, not at all. <laughs> so I'm off for the summer. You don't have to do any of that. Okay. But uh, <laughs> that is my Instagram's is jmore37. Yeah. That, that's J. That's criminal. It's all on my fifth step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fucking criminal, dude. No. We're going to... Yeah. I know what I'm going to do. And I give Jay another round of applause. Woo! Yeah, so it seems like Bobby really wants to help him get his career back on track, which I think he could do it. You know, I think he could probably revive it because... It's been a while, you know, over 10 years since everything happened. And even when everything went down, I think he took some blame for it. Like he admitted he screwed up. And, you know, the whole situation, it's not like a clear case of him stealing a joke. You know, it's pretty complicated, which Burt even admits, you know, he takes some blame for it. Also, Jay, I'm sure he's changed a lot as well. Like he said, he used to have a drug problem and now he's clean. So I'm sure his behavior has changed quite a bit. Also, I doubt Rogan even really cares that much about this anymore. And it'd be interesting to see them do a podcast together or him and Bert. So we'll see if he can get his career back on track. But either way, luckily for him, money's not a problem. He doesn't need to worry about that because he's married to the owner of the Lakers, Jeannie Buss, who's worth like a billion dollars. So fortunately, that's not something he's struggling with. But obviously, it's nice to have a career of your own and be making your own money. So that's about it here, but make sure you guys go check out my Patreon account. I just posted a new video about the most recent Kill Tony episode, and I've been talking a lot about that show because there's a lot going on, and Tony's ego keeps getting bigger. He was recently just caught bragging about this new Netflix deal he made that he claims is the biggest thing since Rogan's Spotify deal. So if you want to hear about that, or the time Tim Dillon humbled Whitney Cummings, or the degeneracy of Ari Shafir, or the cringiest JRE episodes, and a ton of other stuff, there are over 80 videos, make sure you check out the Patreon account. I'll put a link in the description.